Lift up your voice, cry aloud, and spare not. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Torah, day number four, the Torah portion, even more. And there is one verse, and in particular, one word in that verse we want to focus on today. Vehicle Leviticus chapter 23, and verse 1 and 2 says, And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them the appointed times, the Hamoedim of Yahweh, which you are to, here's our word for today, to proclaim as set apart gatherings. My appointed times are these. And we'll take a brief look at the various Moeds or Moedim, the, the feast days. But let's take a few moments and look at this word, uh, proclaim. If you go to um, something like Blue Letter Bible or Strong's or something of that nature, and you're probably going to be directed to the word kara, uh, transliterated a Q-A-R-A, -A, kara, to call or call out and to recite or to read and among the various references to this word is the idea of calling out um, to cry out urgently for help. And um, it also talks about calling as to call someone's name. That's not just to speak their name, but to uh, determine someone's name. So my father helped my mother determine that my first name was to be Barry. And uh, it's not Barry, B-E-E-R, or B-E-R-R-Y, as I am often referred to. <clears throat> B-A-R-R-Y, Barry. So my dad, and in a lot of ways, named me or called my name. To call someone's name, to determine or to choose the name for something is to uh, proclaim or announce a, a bit of sovereignty. Uh, the word study or the theological word book of the Old Testament uh, gives us an understanding that Yah exercise his sovereignty by naming the stars and the planets, calling light, light, and darkness, darkness. He exercises his authority over that. That's a fascinating study in and of itself. Then he brought the animal kingdom to, uh, to Adam to name because Adam was being given sovereignty over the earth. So he was allowed to exercise his sovereignty in the name of the animal kingdom. So there are various aspects of this calling and exercising authority over by the calling. But our word is a variant of this root. It is the word mikra. M-I-Q-R-A. Um, so it is, the root is there, but it's mikra. And we typically translate this word as convocation or a called assembly. It also connotes the idea of reading, that is to read aloud, to announce or to proclaim. And so the issue here that we are proclaiming, that we are announcing, are the Hamoedim. Uh, we do so beginning with Shabbat. And there are special Shabbats throughout the year, seven in fact. Each of the five major feast days, four in the spring, three in the, uh, in the fall or autumn, each of these are special Shabbat days. There are additional Shabbat days added, one at the end of the Feast of Hagmak Salt, or Unleavened Bread, and additionally one at the end of the Feast of Tabernacles, or Sukkot. So there are seven special Shabbats throughout the year. These Shabbats are an extension of the consistent Shabbat on a weekly basis. 
In verse 3 of our chapter, it says that six days work is done, but the seventh day is a Shabbat of rest. It is a set-apart gathering. Now, I understand that many are not able to gather due to location and no one to gather with. Uh, in a Hebraic culture, you may very well have a, uh, a Bet Midrash or a synagogue locally where everyone would walk to and have prayers together and a service together. But I know that many who listen to this, this uh, program, that you are isolated. And I often think about you. And I applaud you. For those who, who hear this today, who are all by yourself, maybe it's you and your spouse or you and your family. You may have a small number that would meet with you in your living room. I stand up and cheer. Uh, I announce loudly, proclaim with all of my heart, appreciation for you. It's easier, it's not always easy, but it is easier when you have a congregation to meet with where you can travel and fellowship and, and eat with and study with and dance with and uh, edify one another. When you don't have that, it is a challenge. For those of you that continue on what you're doing with a pure heart and with a fervent spirit, and support and encourage by whatever means that you can those that you're isolated from. When it comes time to receive crowns in the kingdom, when we are brought to Messiah and given account of our lives before him, you will stand in line far ahead of me. I have a congregation. I have people that I'm associated with and fellowship with. To me, you're the heroes of the Hebraic Roots community. My hat is off to you, and I applaud you loudly, and I thank Yah for you. That said, the understanding is that Shabbat is Shabbat is Shabbat, and it will always be Shabbat. It is the only day of the week that is given something other than a numerical name by the voice of the Creator. Yah says day one, day two, and so on through day six, until he comes to the seventh day and he actually gives it a name. He calls it Shabbat. When we agree with him on Shabbat, then everything else will begin to fall in place. It may take time, but it will. My, my frequent uh, statement has been for years, if a man or a woman are not willing to observe Shabbat, neither are they going to be willing to observe anything else of the Torah and remain doing so. Because Shabbat is the foundation. When you get to Shabbat and you embrace it and you understand, began to try to taste it and understand it and appreciate it for what Yah is calling it, then it will lead you step by step to embracing everything else that Yah is asking of us. Based on Shabbat, then, we have Pesach, the days of redemption and deliverance of our priestly function, Hagmat so where we are examined and find ourselves to be without sin, where we celebrate the first fruits of the resurrection and the, ascent, uh, the, the raising up of Yeshua as our Messiah, which leads us to the day that we're now counting towards Shavuot, the giving of the Torah and the outpouring of the Ruach of Kodesh, that the Torah, the Word, and the Spirit, the Ruach, work together. One is not opposed to the other, which will then lead us to the days of the coming of the King and the announcing with trumpets His arrival, the day of the atonement of Israel, while all Israel will be redeemed to enter with Him into His kingdom, the days of Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles. This is Yah's plan. It's a beautiful plan. It's an awesome plan. Let's proclaim it. People may not understand it. They may roll their eyes. They may fold their arms and huff and sigh. Proclaim it anyway. Announce his kingdom in his feast days. 
and we'll see you again tomorrow to this Shalom.